the Lord is definitely, his spirit is in this place. And I'm just so thankful for what he's already doing and the songs that we've heard from the Acts Divine Praise. I love that you all was able to sing those songs this morning, a cappella, and it sounded like it's, it was music, but you all just sound so beautiful. And I just love the atmosphere of worship that God is has in this place. So we just appreciate you all for that and appreciate each and every one of you for being here today to rejoice in the Lord with us. Us. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. And so I'm just up here to share with you what I feel God has laid on my heart today. And I'm so thankful. And I pray that it blesses each and every one of you and that it can speak to your heart as it has been speaking to my heart on this week. So I invite you all to stand with me for a few minutes. Stand up with me today and we're going to do an exercise. Okay, y'all? We are going to get, let me get my stopwatch going. Okay, so everybody's up standing on their feet. I want you to stand strong and confident. Come on, with your, your strong stand, confident. And I want you to look at the person to your right. Turn to the person to your right and say, you're looking at a winner. Okay, now turn to the person to your left and say, you're looking at a winner. All right, okay, y'all got it. Y'all, Now I want you to, to, to stand strong with me. We all going to stand strong together, and we're going to tell the enemy that with God, I win. Come on, we're going to do it together. With God, I win. So you can go back down from the hell pits from whence you came in Jesus' name. With God, we win. You win. Because today we got some winners in here today. So you may now be seated. In the name of Jesus, you all just declared life over your own selves. We all just spoke life. So today, you may have heard this simple message many a times before, but the good news is that we're going to hear it again today, okay? So bear with me. Nelson Mandela said it like this, it always seems impossible until it's done. Ted Turner said, you can never quit. Winners never quit, and quitters never win. Martin Luther King Jr. once said, if you, can, if you can't fly, run then run. If you can't walk, I'm sorry. If you can't run, then walk. And if you can't walk, then crawl. But whatever you do, you have to keep moving forward. And Winston Churchill, in one of his most powerful speeches, said it like this, never, never, never give up. And I'm here to remind us on today to stand up, look up, and never Never give up. You will win with Jesus. We will win with Jesus. So we're going to read from 1 Corinthians 15, verses 57 and 58. So if you got your Bibles, then turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 57 through 58. And I'm sure they're bringing it up right now on the screen. If you don't have your Bible, if you don't have it on your phone. So we're going to read this together. So we're going to stand up again and read this verse together. Okay, yes. Here we go. But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. For as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Now you all may be seated again. We're doing a lot of standing up today, but that's okay because we're standing up strong and confident. So I want to ask you a question. What work has the Lord called you to do in this season? It says that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. And today, I'm going to share with us people in the Bible that did not give up. And then I'm going to give you five reasons why you and I cannot give up. And so as we think about this passage, 
Apostle Paul encouraged his, the, the brethren, he encouraged the church at Corinthians. He said, look, y'all, in verse 57, we just read that, but thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory. So as we already said, we win in the end. We will win no matter what what type of trials we go through, what type of giants we face. With Christ, we win. And then he says in verse 58, but he says, come on, therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast. Keep on doing the work of the Lord. Be unmovable. Don't let nothing move you. Always abounding, always continuously flowing and doing the good work that God has called us to do for as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. So at times, we grow weary. That's why he tells us, be not weary in well-doing. He tells us that in due season, we shall reap if we faint not. So the Bible gives us so many examples of people that the Lord called to do a work and discouragement began to seep into their hearts. And how many of you can relate to that? Maybe you God called you to do something, or maybe you felt like it was the Lord laid something in your heart, or it was something that he wanted you to do for him. It may have not always been something big and extravagant, but it was something that God had laid on your heart. And how many of you have grown discouraged before? You're like, why me, Lord? I can't do this. You face opposition. You face trials and you face things that try to come and knock you down. We all can relate to growing discouraged, right? Because it, it happens to each and every one of us. Students, those of you still in school, whether it's undergraduate or graduate school, we face discouragement. I've been there and I know that it was, it was close to the end. I was like, I can't wait to be done. Or why am I doing this? Why am I going through these financial hardships? Why every time it seemed like I take one step forward, I got to take four steps back. But I kept trying and kept persevering. And with God, I was able to graduate from Eastern Illinois University with both my ba well, bachelor's and master's degree. But it didn't happen overnight. But with God, he kept me going. So the same thing for, for you if you're still in school and you're studying and you feel like you at times like I don't even want to study I don't even want to write I don't even want to go to class but don't give up keep applying yourselves keep on doing the necessary things that you have been called to do during this season it's a good work and in the end the result is that you will graduate from EIU with your degree whether it's your bachelor's your master's or both and then you will be able to be prepared to have a job lined up for you when you graduate and so you're doing the necessary part, but don't give up at times when you feel like it. Cultivated ministers are now, they is, there's two groups now, group A and group B, so group B just got started. They're almost done with their first semester. So yay, they've been doing a great work. They've been posting memory verses. They've been um, reading the passages daily. They've been sharing the plan of salvation, the oneness. They've been putting in that work. They've been doing the things that everybody may not see on the outside, and then they're preparing to be ministers of the gospel. And so, of course, they got, a, a, they got a, some ways to go, but the keep doing the good work because it will prepare you in the end to be used of God even more for those of us who are working in our jobs and there's visions that the company have, have has given us. I think about on my job, I work for the TRIO office and we have um, a, to do a grant and we, we, our grant allows us to serve a certain amount of students and so I'm constantly keeping in mind what the vision of this um, of our of our job is. How can I help to contribute? How can I do the things I need to do now to contribute to the overall vision? And I'm reminded, don't get weary. Don't get grow weary doing this little things, the small things like writing up reports. Don't go weary being kind and, and trying to love on the students and making encouraging them. So whatever you're doing in your job, whatever it is, keep doing it to the best of your ability and watch the Lord bless your faithfulness. For those of us, we, those of you who are, or those of us who are um, in relationships, at times you face different issues and things, but don't give up. Don't grow weary, whether it's you think about a loved one, and maybe you're trying to build a relationship with that loved one, and, and it may seem like, it's not, is it working? Is it, I'm trying to get to know them, or I'm trying to keep that relationship. Don't give up, but keep on trusting Jesus. So how does this relate to us today? I want you to keep two things in mind. We will face discouragement, number one. Number two, God is working through us.
God is working through us. It is he that work is in, works in us. Philippians 2 and 13, it is God that worketh in you to do of his good pleasure. So whatever God has called you to do, he is the one that's going to work through us. Philippians 1 and verse 6, it tells us, being confident in this very thing, that he which have begun a good work in you will perform it unto the day of Jesus Christ. So that's telling me that whatever good work God has begun in me when I was in my mother's womb, the good work he's called you to do. He's predestined us with a purpose. Some of you may be like, I don't know what that purpose is, but keep your eyes fixed on Jesus because he's not going to quit on the work that he has begun in your life, in our life. God is always working, y'all, even when we don't feel it. He's always working. Many times people say, where is God? Well, we can look outside of our windows and we can say the sun is shining. God is working. The moon is out at, uh, out at night. God is working. When we can wake up and say I've been protected in my sleep, that no one broke in, nothing happened, God is working. We may not always see it, but we have to trust that he is at work, but he's called us to do a good work too, and we can't give up because we are laborers together with God, as 1 Corinthians 3 and verse 9 says. So being laborers with him, meaning his spirit works through us. When Jesus, when he died and he rose again, he left us. He gave us a comforter. He gave us his spirit. And so his spirit flows through us. That's why we want to be filled to overflow with his spirit. That's why we want to encounter God. That's why we want to be in his presence. Because if we, if we don't, his spirit is what will keep us. He will motivate us. He will give us hope. He will deliver us. And so we want to walk in the spirit because we will face oppositions. So I'm going to, opposition, tell you about a few people in the Bible who did not give up. And then I'm going to share with you five reasons why we can give up. Number one, Moses. Moses was called to lead the children of Israel out of bondage, out of the land of Egypt. Pharaoh refused to let the people go many times. The people even got mad at Moses. They were losing faith, and they still were discouraged. But what if Moses would have given up? What if Moses would have said, Lord, these people ain't listening. They don't, they don't understand. They, 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 they lost faith. Pharaoh still is not hearkening to my voice. You've called me to do this, but I'm not seeing any results. What if Moses would have given up? The children of Israel wouldn't have made it out of the land of Egypt because they made it through. Moses encouraged them. Moses kept interceding from the, for them even when they were um, worshiping idol gods. He, he did not give up on them. And so that's why we can't not give up. We can't give up on people at times when we feel like, why isn't someone acting this way? We have to keep pressing and trust that God is at work. David did not give up. David did not give up even though his brothers, they, you know, they kept, of course, being a little brother. They probably like, go back home, David. Get go on back home. You came to give us the food. Now get. But David was like, no, I want to see, like, who is this, this uncircumcised Philistine that's trying to defy our God? No, I'm going to, he, he has some courage. And he, what if David would have went back? Goliath would not have been defeated. David didn't give up even in the face of giants. He also did not give up even when we know what David David sinned. He sinned against God. He had a man killed and we committed adultery, but David repented. He repented when he was, when his sin was brought out to light. He could have been like, look, yeah, I did it. Lord, I'm just going to sit here and just, just die. I, I messed up. But he faced the responsibility. We do things in our lives that we're like, I don't want to face the music. But he faced it. He repented. He got back up and he got things right with God did not let that stop him from serving the Lord. He was passionate for Jesus. Just like Psalm 27 and verse 4, he says, one thing have I desired of the Lord, that will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. He wanted to be in the presence of God, and he did not give up even when he fell short. He got back up, and he got right with God, and he got back into the Lord's presence so we can't give up even when we fall short even when we do things that that hurt God we have to go to him and repent and 
accept his forgiveness. And then we got to turn around and say, Lord, I'm going to draw closer to you because I know you love me and you still have a purpose for me. And as a result, David did not give up. He was able to pass down the, 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 the kingdom to his son, Solomon, in the temple that he hoped to build. It wasn't built by him, but it was built and his son was able to build it, build it so we cannot give up even when we mess up. The next person who did not give up is Noah. Noah was called to build an ark in the midst of a generation that did not believe him. Nobody believed him. It's the Bible calls Noah a preacher of righteousness. But you all want to know the interesting thing? That nobody but his family, as a result of his preaching, nobody else came into that ark. Nobody else was saved, but Noah was preaching truth. He was being obedient to God. The ark was built, and it sure did rain on the earth for 40 days and 40 nights, as the Lord said. And then he wiped out the, he had to do a new thing. But how would you feel? Many of us are sharing. we witnessing to people. we encouraging people to, to, to tell them, look, I just want you to encounter what I have. I'm just trying to be obedient to the Lord, and I love you. But what if nobody responds? Will you give up? Will you stop inviting people to church? Will you stop sharing your testimony when nobody responds? We can't give up because Noah did not give up. He continued and he was faithful to God. So let's not give up. We got so many platforms to share the gospel. Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. What else? YouTube, Snapchat. Marco Polo. So we got a lot. Somebody said something else. What's it say? Snipper. Oh, well, we have a lot of platforms, y'all. And so we can share the gospel through different ways as the Lord give us wisdom. So don't give up. Keep posting inspirational things on your page if that's what you do. Leland's always, he's sharing his um, posts on Facebook and encouraging everyone to have a good day. And it, you, you know that you are blessed. And I mean, keep doing that because that is that can be giving life to somebody that need it. So keep sharing the good news. Keep sharing it. Even if you feel like, did nobody watch my video? Did nobody comment? We're just going to keep doing it because we want to be faithful to God. And we want to, we want to be preachers of righteousness, of truth. So don't give up. Nehemiah did not give up when rebuilding the walls. And I'm going to read this verse because I just love. Nehemiah was such an inspiring leader to me because he faced opposition. And I, I can relate to that by him being able to hear those voices, but being able to discern that gnaw. I'm not going to give heed to this. He prayed. He was a man of prayer. But he also used wisdom because he had people, when, they, when he knew that they were coming against him, they was enemies. They was hating. Have you ever had people that when you got to go, you're like, I'm about to start serving. I'm about to start doing this right. I'm about to start um, new, you know, new year, new me. I'm about to start going to church. I'm about to start memorizing scriptures. Then you got people like, what you doing that for? Like, you ain't used to do that. Like, what you try? That ain't gonna work. You got people talking you down. Like, come on, get real. You got people trying to to hate, and it's not that they they, they just wanted to, to spook you to really see if you really about what you say you about. But Nehemiah was like, look, I ain't even got time. I am not going to come down to y'all and stop what I'm doing to entertain y'all foolishness. I'm going to keep working, and I'm going to let my work speak for me. And so as a result, in verse 6, so it was Sam Ballad and Tobiah, and they were, they were just spying like, oh, he really rebuilding his wall. It was, it was an assignment that he prayed about for the Lord. He didn't just go and do this. He prayed about it. He sought God. Nehemiah chapter 6, verse 3. Sorry. Nehemiah 6, verse 3. But the entire chapter is just amazing. So verse 3, when I send messages unto them, this is what he said, saying, I am doing a great work so that I cannot come down why should the work cease? Why should I stop what I'm doing while it's, I leave it, while I leave it idle and come down to you? Why shall I stop doing the assignment that God has called me to do, the good work, the great work that the Lord will perform in us? 
and I come down to you. I'm wasting time. I ain't got time for that. I'm going to keep doing it. And I love his response. And then in verse 8, then I sent unto him, saying, There are no such things done as thou sayest, but thou feignest them out of thine own heart. So now they're like trying to put lies in his ear. And he said this, you all, for they all made us afraid, saying, Their hands shall be weakened from the work that it be not done. Now, therefore, O God, strengthen my hands. So that's letting us know that Nehemiah did face discouragement. But I love what he said. He said, oh, God, strengthen my hands. So when we face discouragement, we can say, oh, God, strengthen my hands, Lord. They're trying to feed all feed me these lies and I'm growing weary. But, Lord, strengthen my hands so that I can continue the work you've called me to do. And we see in verse 15. So the wall was finished in the 25th day of the month. It was finished. So as a result. Nehemiah did not give up, so we cannot give up. No matter how big or how small the task is, we have to keep going because we are winners, y'all. The next person who did not give up was Elijah. Now, Elijah, we've been reading in, in 2 First Kings and 2 Kings, and I just love it because there's so much good stuff in there. But Elijah was a prophet of the Lord, and basically, Elijah did not give up when the land was going through a famine. He was like, look, he probably like, how am I going to survive? I'm doing the work of the Lord, but I don't really got, I don't got no food to the Lord led him to fast. But basically, he was fed by a raven, and then the Lord sent him to this widow woman, and she was in the position that she really, she needed Elijah because her and her son was on their last meal. But basically, Elijah did not give up. What if he had said, you know, Lord, I'm just about to sit here, and I'm not going to be obedient to your will because I just don't see I'm going to give up because I don't see the provision, so I'm just going to stop. But he kept going, and as a result, the widow woman, her and her son were blessed. And then he kept going where he didn't just say, I'm going to sit here and die. But as a result, Elijah was able to, to, to prophesy what the Lord was going to do. He was able to, and he spoke, thus saith the Lord. He did not make up what he felt like what the Lord said, but he was a man of God. And as a result of that, Elisha, he asked for a double portion of Elijah's anointing, and he was able to do even more as a result of Elijah. What if Elijah would have given up? He was an inspiration to Elisha. He also did not give up when Jezebel in 1 Kings <laughs> chapter 19, 4 through 5. So Elijah had went in um, they go and check it out. Check it out. It's really good. But he basically went and he was trying to show them the children of Israel had begun to worship Baal. And he was trying to show them if God be God, let our the, the, the real God is going to be tested by fire. So basically he did that. He did what God wanted him to do. And then Jezebel find out she put out some known like, look, I'm going to kill you. She threatened him, Jezebel. And as a result, he ran and he hid, he escaped. And, and he got to the place where he was under this juniper tree. And he's just like, just let me die. He was, pers- he was being persecuted for doing the work of the Lord. But the Lord knew where he was. He was able to even reach down into his soul. The Lord didn't give up and say, look, Elijah, you're talking a little foolish right now. But he knew he can feel the the anguish what he was going through. But the Lord encouraged him. And Elijah was able to get back up. And he was able to go and seek God to really hear his voice in that still, small voice. So don't give up when we are facing persecution and someone's out to get us because Elijah did not give up. Apostle Paul was the next person who did not give up. Apostle Paul, we all know he was he was persecuting Christians until he had this encounter with Jesus. So he was doing his own thing, as all many of us have been there. We had the life before Christ and the life with Christ. So he had he had this encounter, but he did not give up, even though he probably knew the disciples and many others will not believe me. They are not going to believe that I was the one persecuting Christians and now I'm called to preach the gospel to the Gentiles, but he did not give up. Some people may not believe the change in you because they may be afraid because they didn't hear from God, but don't give up. Even if people don't believe it, do what God has called you to do in this season. Paul did not give up. And the last person who did not give up, 
and we know who he is. His name is Jesus, our Savior, the King of kings and the Lord of lords. And that's the reason why we're all here today, because Jesus did not give up on you and I. He didn't give up on us even when he was persecuted, when he was betrayed, even by his own friends. He did not give up on us even though he was mistreated, misunderstood, didn't nobody think that he was the Messiah, but he kept pressing because he knew it was worth it. He knew that he had a work to do. He came to do the work that God has sent him to do, and he saved through, because of that, we have salvation through Jesus Christ. There is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved in Jesus' name. So we cannot give up. What can we do? We can look unto Jesus in Hebrews 12, verses 20, I meant 2 and 3. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him but endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. For consider him that endured such contradiction of sinners against himself lest ye be wearied and faint in your minds. So when we face it, we got to consider, but Jesus, Jesus experienced something like this. I can make it. I can press on with Christ. I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. Lord, you didn't call me to quit. You called me to win. You called me out of darkness into your marvelous light to show forth your praise. And I need you, Lord. Oh, I need you to finish this race because I know that there's joy on the other side. I know that if I don't quit, somebody else will be blessed as a result. And I will be able to hear you say, well done thou good and faithful servant. So let's not quit. Jesus didn't quit, and he's still working. He's working because we have breath in us on today. Each and every one of us are here because Jesus has drawn us here. We're drawn by his anointing. That's what we feel in this place is the anointing of Jesus. And I'm going to tell you five reasons why you can't quit. One, it will be worth it all. It was worth it for Jesus. Our soul, the price he paid, it was worth it, as he said. So we can say that I have worth. He paid his life for me. So we can't quit because it will be worth it all. Number two, you are making a difference. You may not hear people say it all the time that you're making a difference, that you're doing something, that maybe your smile just blessed them on today. Maybe you just speaking to that person, encourage them. Maybe you just reaching out and lend a listening ear. Maybe you just befriending someone. You're making a difference. You may not be there preaching to uh, someone in the classroom or what you're doing, but you're being a light. Let your light, keep letting your light so shine. Just like Philip was sent to encouraged the Ethiopian eunuch and as a result he was saved he needed someone to come and just to help expound on the word of God for him because he was seeking but he needed someone maybe someone needs a friend or someone to to help them during this season keep being that light you're making a difference the third reason why you can't give up is because people are counting on you. You have a testimony. We all have something that valuable that God has put inside of us. Each and every one of us are unique, and we are special because God has birthed within us something good, a dependency on him. So people are counting on you. You may be the person that someone looks up to as a mentor, as an inspiration. There's people that may not have uh, someone in their life there to show them the way, but you may be be that person. So don't give up. The fourth reason why we can't give up is because God's grace is sufficient. 2 Corinthians 12 and verse 9, as Apostle Paul besought the Lord thrice so that he can take away that thorn in the flesh, that thing that he struggled with that we don't really know what exactly it was. But can we relate to Apostle Paul? We may have that struggle, that thing that we think, Lord, if I didn't have this struggle, then I would be able to serve you better. But then he says, but my grace is sufficient. So God's got grace that is sufficient for each and every one of us so we can't give up. And the fifth reason why we can't give up is because we are called. 
We are set apart and called for his purpose. So we cannot abort the calling of God because when he's trying to birth something within us, usually when you're trying to birth something, it it, it goes through, if it goes through that abort stage, it did not even get to reach the full potential that it could have. So don't give up. Don't abort the call. Don't let the circumstances of life make you quit because you're not a quitter. We're winners. With Christ, we win. It may look like it's not working out, but we know that sooner or later, it will turn in our favor because we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the call according to his purpose. So Jesus can work it all out according to his purpose for your will. Does anybody in here feel like you need to be encouraged? You need to be strengthened as a, as a Nehemiah did. You need to be revived. You need to be picked up to get back up and stand up and be able to go another week, to be able to go another day. Is anybody in here crying out to God to help you to not quit? Hey, I've been there. That was me earlier this week. I'm like, Lord, I need you. And he reminded me of this scripture. Be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. For as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. And that's why I'm able to share this with you all today. Because I too have to, this is speaking to me. I'm not just up here just sharing stuff with you just for the fun of it. Because as this is giving me life, this is feeding my soul. And I pray that it's doing the same thing for you, that God made us to be winners. And I'm going to just share this last thing with you all in 2 Kings 13 and verse 20. 2 Kings 13 and verse 20, it's about Elisha. Elisha asked for the double portion of Elijah's anointing. He was desperate for Jesus. He wanted to do something for the Lord. And as Elisha lived his life, sold out for Jesus, being prophesying, what thus saith the Lord, and he got sick and he died. But as they were burying Elisha, Elisha, they had him in a sepulcher. And it says, and it came to pass as they were burying a man that behold, they spied a band of men and they cast the man into the sepulcher of, sepulcher of Elisha. And when the man was let down and touched the bones of Elisha, he revived and stood up on his feet. How can a dead man rise up on his feet by touching the bones of another dead man because Elisha's work was not in vain. The anointing of God on his life was still able to flow even after his death, even after he was in the sepulcher. Another dead man's body was able to touch his and he was revived. He was awakened. He was quickened and he was able to stand on his feet and he was able to be strengthened. So Lord, we need you, Jesus, to strengthen us on today. We need a touch from you that we can stand on our feet and look the things in the eye that try to discourage us and say that I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. I will win. I am not a quitter because I know who's with me. If God be for me, then who can be against me? I am the child of the King Jesus and he won't give up on me. So Lord, I'm not going to quit. I'm not going to give in. I'm going to keep serving you, Lord. I'm going to keep witnessing, Lord. I'm going to keep being obedient to you even when I feel like I I have given up or I've messed up because I love you, Jesus, and I know you hold my world in your hands. You're the author and the finisher of my faith, and my faith is in Jesus Christ. It's not in myself. It's not in anyone else. It's not in my abilities. It's not in anything in myself, but it is in Jesus. So let's put our faith in Jesus on today, and let's come, and let's just gather around this altar, and let's continue to seek his face.